Hi everyone, it's Scott Allen from The Raw. This new 3D tool I've developed is useful for analysing attacking plays that lead to line breaks and or tries. But the second test between the Wallabies and France didn't throw any of those up, so instead I'll use it to look at a defensive play and some decision making. First up is a great bit of scrambling defence by the Wallabies in the fourth minute of the match. After a 22 restart, the French make good ground down the centre of the field through some pretty soft Wallabies defence. On the fourth phase, the French move the ball wide. The play's rolled on a bit before we get a wide shot, so I want to start by putting the players back in the position they were when the ball was about to be cleared from the ruck. The French have power at the base of the ruck, tails folding around, and just outside of him is the tight head prop Slamani. Madara is trying to join in from the far wing in behind. Doolan's moved up from fullback and he'll be the main ball carrier. He's got Huge outside him on the wing in support. The Wallabies are short in numbers and the French are a good chance to score here. Tamua's at the edge of the ruck, Foley's outside him and Cummins is out wider. He's got two players he's got to deal with. I'll highlight that part of the field and just those players. Now let's take a look from behind the Wallabies. The obvious space is outside Cummins. To try and cover that space, all three Wallaby defenders are going to have to push across rather than up. However, Foley makes a decision to go out of the line and try to shut the ball down inside before it can get wide. In reality, that was never going to work, and his decision leaves Tamura and Cummins with even more work to do to shut down the French. Their movement's now basically straight across field, and it's at this point that Cummins has to make a decision. Does he stay in on Doolan, who's got the ball and is in front of him? or does he keep pushing across out to Huge on the wing? To make the right decision, there has to be good communication and trust between Tamura and Cummins. Although we can't hear what the players were calling, I'm almost certain Tamura on the inside would have been telling Cummins to push. Cummins makes the right choice, and this means Huge outside is less of an option for Doolan to pass to. With Cummins pushing out, Doolan then straightens up inside him and heads for the try line. It's now all down to Tamura, whether he can get across to make the tackle on Doolan. And as you can see, he's still a fair way inside Doolan. Tamur does a fantastic job, and he manages to get across to Doolan, pulls him down just before the try line. As you'll see as I roll the footage on, Tamur not only makes the tackle, but then gets back to his feet and dives on the ball that's now free of the tackle area. It was a try-saving moment, and if the French had scored there, who knows what the outcome of the match could have been. Now I want to have a look at an example of the Wallabies' decision-making in regards to kicks. If you were watching the coverage on Fox, you would have heard Rod Kafer around the 10 minute mark pointing out the space deep in behind the French defensive line when the Wallabies had a scrum on halfway. The Wallabies were penalised at that scrum so weren't able to take advantage of that space at that time. However, they got another opportunity just 10 minutes later from another scrum on the halfway, almost in midfield. Let's have a closer look at what happened on this occasion. Here's the position of the players as they were when the scrum was fed. The Wallabies are set up to run a midfield attack. They've got three players grouped close together as we're seeing quite often from the Wallabies. The French back line are waiting for that and they've got them covered. It still looks like a good attacking opportunity though. It doesn't fit the game plan we've heard about where the Wallabies were saying they didn't want to play in their own half. This looks like a great opportunity to run the ball. However, it looks like Foley's made a decision to kick rather than run before the ball is even fed to the scrum. Whether that's the right decision or not is irrelevant for the purposes of this analysis. Instead, I want to look at the options Foley has for the kick. Let's take a look from behind the Wallabies. When Foley looks at what's in front of him, he sees all of the French backs up in the defensive line, except Doolan, who's positioned deep and about 20 metres in from the right touchline. There's plenty of space in behind the defensive line, and Foley's got a number of options for his kick. He could put it short in midfield, with chases coming through looking to regather the ball, or he could go long and left for Cummins to chase down the left touchline, and try to regather or to force the French to kick the ball out deep in their own territory. If Doolan wasn't so far across to the right touch line, a kick to the right may be on with Falau and Ashley Cooper to chase. However, Doolan's got that covered, so the only kick that isn't an option, in my opinion, is one that goes anywhere near Doolan. However, as you'll see as I roll the footage on, Foley kicks the ball straight to him, which just gives the French cheap possession and wastes an attacking opportunity. It doesn't look like Foley was aiming somewhere else and just executed poorly. It looks like a clear case of poor decision making. We'll see whether those same spaces are available to the Wallabies in the third test and whether they can exploit them better.